Evening and all. I uh, just wanted to um, do a quick update on the Corvette, the uh, Callaway uh, vet that I'm building. Um, let's show you where I am here. So as you can see, I got the interior and the chassis installed. Uh, I also have the engine installed. I'm trying not to move it too much. I only just put these uh, intercoolers in and the air conditioning. So I'm just waiting now for the glue to set up. So I'm trying not to move it around too much. Uh, you can see how crammed it is underneath or underneath where the hood will be. Uh, you can't even hardly see down through the model there's a lot of detail in there um, a lot of there's a lot of parts that go into that engine so the only thing I have left to do with the engine now is um, oops I just need to put in this coolant or uh, I think it's a washer bottle for the tank and I also need to put the turbochargers on now as you can see uh, just looking at it here from the top uh, there's nowhere from the top for the turbochargers to go so the turbos are mounted underneath this car and I'll just show you here on the instructions so you can see here the turbos are in two pieces. There's a this one is the left one. You do the same thing for the right side. However, you can see here when you install the turbos in the car, there's actually three separate interface points. Now remembering this kit is from I thought it was from the late 80s, it's actually from the early 90s, uh, 92. Um, I'll be more than surprised if these three points line up with this turbo when I go to put it together. I'll be very, very surprised if, if that happens. Um, might be able to get two of them, but I kind of got my doubts of all three of them will line up. And then just uh, looking at the instructions here, uh, yeah, you can see once I have those turbos in, then it's basically suspension front and rear suspension. Now the other thing I find a bit odd about this kit uh, you can see here they have um, some semblance of brake detail uh, they have a slight indication of a brake rotor here but um, if you just And you can see here, here's the uh, rear brake. Same thing, just a very, very slight indication. But if you look here in this step, you put a cover completely over the brakes. So I don't even see a point of, a, I don't even understand what the point is of even having these. It's completely covered. It's completely covered by this wheel assembly for attaching the wheel. So I'm not even going to bother to put those on, it's a complete waste of time. They can't be seen, I don't, I don't even know why they're on the kit. And the other thing that I'm not really a huge fan of is the exhaust. It's in four separate pieces. No idea why they did that. Um, so yeah, getting pretty close now to, to completing it. Uh, hopefully it doesn't start to give me any trouble again. Um, like I said, this is the third time now that I've this is the third time now that I've taken this out of the box, and it always ends up going back in. You can kind of see there again how much detail is in that engine. It's pretty impressive for such an old kit. Uh, hopefully, this doesn't fall apart. So you can see the bottom chassis here. So anyways, guys, that's where I am with the Corvette. Um, depending on how things go, 
maybe the next update might possibly be the final I'm not sure um, I'm also a bit concerned about uh, mounting the front um, you can see here this is the front fascia this is a completely separate part from there but like a lot of things on this kit you can see there are no there's no attachment points there and, and a lot of this kit is like that it's uh, there's no positive mounting points for hardly anything so um, you're just kind of left attaching things hoping it's correctly and that everything will come together in the end but but knock on wood so far so good so uh, as always guys thanks for watching and hope you stay tuned for the next update